Andreas Kisser of Sepultura, welcome to 69 Faces of Rock. How are you doing today? Good. On the road, feeling good. Great to be celebrating 40 years of the, our history. The show has been amazing. Excellent. Um, you just mentioned the tour. It is labeled, it's a farewell tour, and it's labeled Celebrating Life Through Death. Tell me about it. Uh, 40 years of history, you know, um, we survived the pandemic situation. Uh, we survived so many different things on this 40 year run, you know, technology changes, vinyl to CD to download to Napster and streaming. And we're here, you know, in our own terms, I think it's a privilege to stop, uh, when we feel it's time to do it mm -hmm. instead of just stopping because of an external thing that happens or if we fight or if we're too old etc you know mm -hmm. i think it's a great momentum from sepultura it's a privilege to to stop as i said you know in peace with ourselves in a very calm um decision that it took two years for us to arrange everything to talk to everyone and uh it feels great i think that's the best that we could do you know on the momentum now we're still young we still feel great to, you know, challenge to start something from scratch in music. Of course, at least this is my, you know, perspective of the future. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do, but that's not the, the, the important right now. I want to celebrate the momentum. I want to enjoy the momentum, you know, the now. It's been an amazing tour and uh, it's great. And then we, you know, we can give a rest if it's forever or if you're going to come back in 5, 10, 15 years. Who knows? Who cares, you know? The moment is now to celebrate what we're doing now. Well, I've seen the Chicago show. It's been great. And I know you played a few more shows and everyone's raving about you, drummer. Who is this guy? Yeah, it's amazing. Another, you know, another young beast that is an amazing <laughs> drummer. <laughs> He's 22 years old. Uh, I was following him for a while. Actually, my son, Johan, which is 27 years old, he was the one who showed me Grayson a few years ago when he was playing some jazz. And then I learned he was with suicidal tendencies, you know, following his steps and his videos and stuff. And when Eloy decided to leave, he was the first name that came into my mind, you know. And I called him and explained the situation. And he, he was very happy and excited to be a part of it. And he had to learn the whole set list in three weeks. You know, he did an amazing job. And um, we're building, we're growing as a band with him. You know, it's fantastic. He's a great guy, very talented guy, you know, uh, very respectful towards Sepultura history. And the fans love him. You know, he's very in touch with everyone, very open, you know, to talk to everyone and... Uh, it's great. It's very positive all around. You know, it's a fantastic addiction for us. Addition. I could not agree more. Um, let's talk some history. I wanted to kind of re-examine the second phase of the band from 1996 onwards. Um, so what was it like to put this band together after the 1996 split? Uh, it was very difficult, of course. We were at the peak of our career in the middle of the Roots tour. And our contract was ending with uh, our manager. And when we didn't didn't want to to renew the contract, Max decided to leave the band together with the management and the label, basically, you know, we, we lost not only the singer, but we lost the whole structure that we took 10 years to build, you know, in the name of Sepultura. And Max took everything, including Ross Robinson and Andy Wallace and the studio we used for Roots, you know, he used everything that we built. Uh, to get there and but we started from scratch from zero basically you know uh we kept the name all the good stuff about it and all the bad stuff about it all the depth all the craziness stuff that the account that we have to deal with there was a fucking confusion and etc okay. we have to reorganize everything rebuild everything you know pay our debts and and really put something um uh, a base that we could rebuild everything you know looking for new managers, looking for the trust from the label, looking for a new singer. Um, and we're here now because all of that, you know, it was a, an amazing learning experience because uh, we had to learn how to, 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 to rebuild everything, you know? Absolutely. How did you find Derek Green and, and what made you decide he was the, the right person? 
Uh, it was a, a suggestion from uh, Mike Kidder, which was the one of the guys that worked at Roadrunner. He was friends with Derek and with us, of course. And he thought Derek could be a good option for us. Derek was was without a band during that those days. Uh, he was working as a, I think, a security guard in a in a bar in New York or something like that. And uh, Mike said, "Oh, maybe Derek could be a good choice." And we sent some, you know, some new songs that we were working for different singers to try out, you know, because we didn't want anyone to sing Brutes or, or you know, songs that we already knew from Sepultura. We wanted somebody that could bring something new to the picture, you know. And Derek was the one. I mean, he showed uh, a lot of new perspective. He didn't want he didn't want it to sound like Max. He didn't look like Max. We didn't want a, a clone. You know, we want somebody new with new ideas and new point of view and new background and new influences and, you know, to build something new, something truthful, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Derek was the one really to show all these possibilities, and you know, it's still here. I guess was the right choice. <laughs> it was. It was. How did your role change after that in the band? I managed to respect. I mean, uh, I I always since day one when I joined Sepultura back in '87, I brought everything. I brought my lyrics. I brought my musical ideas, and you know, you see how different is schizophrenia to born with vision. Uh, not only musically, but the lyrics as well. You know, we stop talking about you know Antichrist, Satan, and morbid, and you know trying stop stealing <laughs> the names from from different bands. You know, from Destruction, from Player, from Venom, and etc. Mm -hmm. And start talking about ourselves. And I think for me, the the lyrics I brought, you know, with that schizophrenia vibe, with that um, you know. Um, kind of like a mental illness or stuff that we live today, you know, the, the, the anxiety, panic attacks and all that stuff. That was the, the and, and, and pretty much influenced a lot by anthrax spreading the disease, for instance, you know, even the cover schizophrenia has more connection to the madhouse idea, you know, the, the cover and all that stuff, you know? So I brought those ideas, uh, like screaming, um, uh, not the, the from the past from the storms was my lyrics escape to the void um you know uh, some other stuff there that i brought that we change the perspective and we start talking about different subjects you know so re my role was always like that i always put 100 percent you know me and max were the ones really to wrote the riffs we worked together a lot in the room with igor basically you know trying ideas and recording cassette tapes and stuff and then uh, Paulo arranged his bass later and, you know, working together as a band. And when Max left, Igor was more close to me. And of course, Derek, lyric wise, you know, we changed the dynamics, but, uh, you know, the role was the same. You know, I, I was still writing. I was still putting my ideas on guitars and lyrics and et cetera. And, and thematics, you know, working with artwork and et cetera, involving everything, you know. I've always felt... What I like the most about you is your incredible guitar tone. I think the way that mixed with what they had before, that created the pure magic. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, uh, and every guitar player has your own tone, you know, regardless of the equipment and stuff. And, and you develop that throughout the years. You know, of course, touring is the best school that you can ever get. You, you have a certain limitation in what you can learn in a in a classroom or videos or watching your idols and stuff you have to be on stage you know to jam to play and to to find solutions for problems and etc and that helps build your own characteristic sound you know so it's it's great i mean after 40 years it's about time <laughs> oh <laughs> there anyways so against comes out how do people react to this in many different ways. <laughs> <laughs> every, I mean, everything. People, a lot of people start liking Sepultura because of Derek joined the band, you know. Oh, I didn't used to like Sepultura because I didn't like the vocals and etc. And they start listening to Sepultura. A lot of people left Sepultura because Max left. And, you know, it happens to every, anything. I mean, Sepultura fan base is very diverse. You know, we don't have a stereotype Sepultura fan, you know. 
we have so many different ages and styles and stuff. And uh, we have every type of reaction, you know, it was really intense times and uh, it was really difficult times, but at the same time, very excite exciting times, you know, with new challenges and new uh, experiences, you know, that, uh, as I said, the consequences of, of us being here today, there's a lot to do with that feeling of, of us rebuilding everything, you know. 2001, Nation comes out. What happens now? Fits in the air, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on Nation, we had a little bit of the support of Roadrunner. Uh, you know, they, they saw that Sepultura could go on. And, you know, against Tour was great. We toured with Slayer. We did shows with Metallica. You know, uh, it was an amazing experience for Derek, especially, you know, to play big shows and to play, to see that atmosphere and stuff was great. Uh, but Nation was the last album with Roadrunner. Uh, although they had a little more support for Nation, it was very difficult experience to to be with them because they, you know, they still had Max and they had that old idea of what Sepultura is supposed to be. They didn't have vision for the future, you know. They only see Sepultura in the past which was horrible for us. You know, we wanted people to, to work towards the future, you know, the friend, uh, the present towards the future. But it was a great album. We did amazing tours with it. Uh, we left Roadrunner after Nation in peaceful terms, no fighting, no nothing like that, which was great. And we signed SPV, you know, to work with new albums. Yeah, speaking of that, uh, Roarback, very interesting Roarback. album. Probably my favorite. Uh, I think things were really starting to happen again. True, yeah, because we had new people working with us. SPV, um, that they didn't have that, um, let's say, the virus of the past. You know, all mm -hmm. the people in Roadrunner work with the old Sepultura, with Max, Igor, Gloria, us, you know. And now we have new people working with this new band, with this new people, new managers, you know, new singer and etc. And it was very exciting. You know, Roarback's a consequence of this new phase in our career you know which was very fruitful and we had um a roar back and and then we did um uh, dante right i think was that's the, right and that's, the that's right, the next yeah. one a concept album how did you yeah, get it? it was a great experience uh although igor was already leaving the band you know he was uh that period of not having more the connection with us and with the fans and with the style of music even that we were doing. He he left the band right after recording the album and was very hurtful for us because we did a tour with Roy Mayorga on drums with In Flames in Europe and then Roy left, you know, for Stone Sour. Uh, he was ready to join Stone Sour and stuff. And um, and we it took a while for us to get Gian Dolabella uh, as a new drummer. So we lost that momentum from Dante. It was very hurtful for us, our career, and uh, up to that point, and our relationship with the label as well, because the way Igor left was really, you know, you know, every every leap, every separation like that is not is, is not easy, you know. But uh, but still, you know, I think the the two albums we did with SPV were great and really showed new possibilities for the Futura. Then you follow with Alex. Another kind of album, this time based on the Clockwork Orange book. How did this album do for you? Yeah, it was great. Also, you know, first uh, uh, work with um, with Xi'an, working with us. Also the same vibe, uh, you know, having a book as a main source of inspiration to write lyrics and music as we did with the Divine Comedy now with Clockwork Orange, you know. And was really exciting, you know, was really writing a soundtrack for a movie, which it's a movie that we love, you know, it was always a big influence on Sepultura um, and was really a great experience for us. And um, and was the last album with SPV, I guess. That's right, because you signed and, with um, Nuclear Blast. Nuclear Blast, yeah. Right. And then uh, you release Kairos, right? Um, I felt, again, another new beginning. How do you feel about this record today? Perfect. That's that's the way we feel too. Nuclear Blast was great. The first meeting we had with uh, Marcus Tiger, you know, he was the one really to show us that, you know, a, a direction, you know, being more metal and Kairos, it's, it's the consequence of that, you know, it was 
really the beginning of this exciting new phase of Sepultura that that we hear now, you know, really started the that that new relationship with Nuclear Blast, which is an amazing label. You know, we had an amazing relationship with them, building our our strength together, you know. And Kairos is still one of our one of my favorite albums in our career. And we still play songs a lot from from Kairos and live and etc. You know, so it's it's a great album for sure. Okay, then uh, you had the Mediator, right? Mediator, which uh, between head and hands must be hard. Uh, what a title! Um, again, I felt another new direction. W where are you going with this now? Yeah, I mean, we have Eloy Casagrande in the band. Jean left, you know, and uh, Eloy came in. Also, very young guy. You know, um, with very talented, amazing drummer who brought very great new possibilities for Sepultura. And Mediator, Machine Messiah, and Quadra, I think it's a part of the same movement, you okay. know, like more or less like um, uh, Arise, Chaos AD, and Roots, you know, that one album was really building the next one. And this one is the same, Mediator Build, you know, working with Ross Robinson, first album with Eloy. It was an amazing experience for all of us. And then Machine Messiah with Jens Borgren, who was consequence of Mediator. And then Quadra, of course, was the continuation of Machine so, Messiah, basically. But, you know? Machine Messiah, that sounds very, like, progressive. Yeah, definitely, yeah. The music was changing too. Like, what, what what was, like, going through your heads? Like, what new influences did you include in Sepultura at this point? Well, everything. I, I love classical music. You know, I love progressive music. Yes, King Crimson, Frank Zappa, you know, Genesis, and all that beautiful stuff, you know. Um, this is something, I mean, schizophrenia, it's a, it's a prog album. For many, in many respects, you know, a lot of different stuff, acoustic stuff and instrumental songs, you know. So um, it's not actually something new for Sepultura, but uh, yeah. But she didn't say, um, it uh, went that, to that direction, like I expect dances, the, the song Machine Messiah, very melodic, very slow paced, you know, and um, it, it is an album that really explore more of this technical side um, especially because Eloy, I think, because Eloy, he could play anything, you know, he can play anything and really inspired to write more, more difficult stuff to the guitar, you know, that I knew that he could do it and, and vice versa, you know, he wrote a lot of stuff on drums, like loops and stuff that I was challenged to, to write riffs and, and create songs out of it, you know, and, and it was very great, you know, uh, that we had that, that connection and that chemistry that worked great on these three albums. Um, Quadra is your final statement, right? Uh, the best. Did you did you know it was gonna be your last record when you made it? I don't know. It is. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> it looks that Who way. <laughs> For a while, yes, yeah, and uh, of course. I mean, it was made right before the the lockdown. You know, we had to cancel all the tours and everything. And uh, but I think we we got lucky that the album came out before the lockdown. You know, so it was cool that fans could could listen to the album during the lockdown, could could participate on the event that we did every Wednesday. You know, the Sepul Quarta, which also came an, an album out of it. You know, with a lot of great guests together with us, and um, you know, I think Quadra it's a, one of the most important albums in our career. Basically, my favorite album, and it's great to play the songs live. It really represents what Sepultura did throughout the whole career, not only lyrics, but musically and everything, you know. I think it's a very complete Sepultura album, you know, and, uh, and it couldn't be a better uh, ending, I think, for this phase, you know, uh, of this 40 years. I think uh, it, it's great that we are leaving this message behind, you know. I could not agree more. Um, now we're back to talking about the Farewell Tour. Um as the tour progresses, I think you've mentioned that you are actually even open for the former members to come in and maybe play a final show, which would make sense. I hope so, yeah. <laughs> You'll be great. We're working on it. And I think mean, we have the plan to go to, to 2026. You know, we would like to, to go everywhere, really to, to explore all the stuff that we can, you know, on this last goodbye. And hopefully at the very last show, which will be in Brazil, 
we have the participation on all all the ex members, including the brothers, of course. You know, that'll be great for the fans and for everyone involved. And uh, hopefully, we could celebrate together this amazing history. Absolutely. And at this point, what is your relationship with Max and Igor? Uh, there's no relationship at all. Mm -hmm. You know, we have just a, a communication between our managers and stuff. You know, and uh, and that's it. Very respectful, but no friendship or no communication. Got it. You know, when, when I met all of you back in 1989, uh, you toured in a small van. Uh, but what I noticed that you were very close. There were great friendships. And I think it would be nice to uh, reclaim that at the end, at the end of the road for everyone. Well, I don't know if that's possible, but uh, all I can tell is what Sepulchre is today is that, you know, friendship. We love each other, uh, you know, band and crew. And this is the Sepultura way of being. This is the Sepultura spirit, you know. No fucking separate buses and separate dressing rooms. And I don't talk to this guy. I don't talk to that guy. You know, that bullshit. We are very much love each other. You know, we we have dinners together. We do stuff together. You know, we jam together. We are on tour together. It's great. You know, um, the vibes are amazing. And that's the way it's supposed to be on a celebration. You know, so very happy with everything that's going on the way it is. When I hung out with you in Chicago last uh, Tuesday, that's exactly what I observed. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. Um, when you look back at all of it, um, what is your favorite face, favorite thing you've done? Today. <laughs> yeah, that's the only time that I deal with my past and my memories. I have so many great memories, you know. Sepultura history is something that, I mean, I had my dreams when I was a teenager. But reality of Sepultura was much further and much better than that I could could ever dream, you know, could possibly imagine all the stuff that happened in our history. It's fantastic. And the feeling is today, you know, it's now. That's the present. That's the most important thing of all. That's where life happens, you know. And uh, and it's today is the best of all. You know, you look back and you see this 40 years of history, it's so much amazing things that happened all the people that I met and my family that I built around the music and traveling, all the friends that we made, you know, that's today. I mean, that's why we're celebrating today. You know, the <laughs> we can go back and really pit point, pick point like the some special moments, but everything resumes to today. If I can add one thing personally, um, I, I feel that you never lost your enthusiasm. You still act the way when I first met you back in 89 in person. Still very enthusiastic, still still very hungry, actually. I hope so. Otherwise, I'll be home. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you so much for speaking with me and good luck with the tour and hopefully everything will work out and, and uh, there'll be a great uh, ending for everyone. Thank you so much. I'm really sorry about this times and all the changes and stuff and I really appreciate your patience and I'm glad that really it happens thank you so much thank you all right man